Good evening. It's good to see you tonight. Hope that you've had a good day today. I want to address um, really tonight and tomorrow really a two-part um, uh, topic. And so the topic tonight is did, God's, uh, did God cause uh, the coronavirus? Um, and uh, uh, we want to look at the scriptures and see what the, the Bible has to say about this. Because I know that probably some of you are getting questions, you know, how, did God do this? How could God allow this? So the answer to it really is it's two-part, can't cover it all in one night. Um, and so we'll answer part of the question tonight and then finish it up uh, tomorrow. But uh, I think the first, to get the answer, the first question we have to ask is, can God send a plague upon a nation? And the answer is yes, God can, all right? Uh, we see examples of that um, primarily in the uh, Old Testament. Um, an example of that would be in a, uh, Exodus 11, uh, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. And so we see that... Uh, uh, yeah, God can bring plagues, and that's just one of several examples we can look in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, even the nation Israel itself, God at times sent plagues upon. And, uh, but we, we, we need to understand that there's a fundamental difference. You know, the plagues upon Israel were uh, plagues because of rebellion, because of sin, where they clearly understood what they were supposed to be doing and willfully chose uh, to do differently. And the plagues were for the purposes of bringing them back uh, into repentance. One thing you have to understand is the nation of Israel is very unique in all of human history as it was God's chosen people, a chosen nation, to carry His message to the world. God has never chosen another nation to, to do that. Uh, and it doesn't mean he doesn't use nations, he does. But he's never chosen any other nation other than Israel to carry uh, his news and his word to the world. And uh, there was a time where God was using the nation of Israel, but there were seasons where they disobeyed and God did bring judgment upon them. And he sometimes did that in the form of a plague. Uh, think of it like this. Um, me as a pastor, there's a... a a higher standard that I should be held to. I should be exemplary in my personal conduct, and God expects that of me as long with, along with other people. And, uh, you know, there's behavior uh, in my life, earlier in my life, before I knew the Lord, before I was strong in the Lord, uh, that God was very gracious with me because it was not right. But if I were to do that same behavior today, uh, I would expect great chastening from the Lord. Why? Well, I've grown, I've matured, I understand more, and thus God expects more of me. And, and that was how it is with the nation of Israel. They knew a lot that God had high expectations of them, and thus when they failed to live up to those expectations, at times He would send judgment upon them, sometimes in the form of a plague. And so uh, God uh, used the nation of Israel and uh, But we find that God would also send plagues upon some other nations, but what we find is that that was often in conjunction with their treatment of Israel. I gave you a moment ago the example of Egypt. Well, they had enslaved the people of Israel, and God had said, let my people go. If they had just let them go, there would have been no plague. But they didn't, and thus there was the ten plagues upon them. Uh, another one, think of the Philistines. When they stole the Ark of the Covenant, there was a plague upon them, and the minute they gave the Ark back, the plague stopped. And so, uh, let's ask this question. Did God send the coronavirus? Scripturally, the answer, I believe, is no. He didn't send it, all right? He, did, he didn't cause it. And Everything I just said is in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God worked through the nation of Israel. They were an entity to reach the world, and they failed ultimately when they crucified the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we are, not, we are in a New Testament economy, not an Old Testament economy, which is very different. Uh, God never changes, but the way He deals with people at different times does differ, and we see that uh, throughout the Scriptures. And uh, God's not working through a nation today. He's working through His church. And He's working through the individuals that make up that church. 
And so the church, uh, churches are derived of people from all nations and all backgrounds and all ethnicities. And, and so uh, in the New Testament economy, God is not judging the world or condemning the world. And, and Jesus talked about this in John chapter 3. He made this really profound statement. We all know John 3, 16. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We, we know that. But the next verses are so important and we often don't pay attention to them. But look at verse 17, John three seventeen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. So listen, what God says here, what Jesus says here is, I have not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. The implication of verse 18 is that the world is already condemned. So Jesus need not come to condemn something that already is. Instead, he came to bring life. The New Testament principle here is that Jesus came to bring life to people. Now, does God know that plagues will occur? Yes. Yes, he does. He's very aware that plagues will occur. What's really interesting is when we read the book of Leviticus, it's, uh, who on earth would call me now? I'm, I'm just... Uh, a mobile number. I'm just going to hang up on them. All right. There they go. Hopefully they don't call back. But uh, 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 where was I? Leviticus. Th- all right. Leviticus. In the book of Leviticus, it's really exciting reading. All right. Um, I'm being sarcastic a little bit. But within it, there's a section. There's sections that talk about plagues. Uh, uh, there are times in the Old Testament where God sent plagues, and those are always associated with sin and rebellion, and, and the remedy was understood. Repent, and the people knew what to do, and they knew what the cause was. Today, we don't know what caused this, and we don't know what the remedy is. In such situations, the book of Le- Le- Leviticus gives us insight, though. You know, what's in- really interesting about Leviticus is that it gives us uh, principles of personal hygiene and quarantining. You, you read uh, uh, Leviticus, uh, uh, quarantining is found in Leviticus 13. All right, that's a, quarantining is a biblical principle. It's not something that man thought up. It's something that God told us to do. Leviticus 15 talks about uh, washing our hands after dealing with sick people. That's principles of personal hygiene. Isn't it amazing that a couple thousand of years ago, before man knew anything about uh, uh, microbiology, that God already knew. And God already put in principles to keep us safe and keep us uh, uh, from from being uh, sick and, and how to deal with sickness. The whole tenor of Leviticus is that sickness and plagues are going to happen from time to time. Not that God is directly causing it, but when God directly caused something, you know it. In other words, when it's from God, you don't have to wonder, is this from God? No, you know it's from God. When we look over in the book of Revelation, we find the judgments for God. And what you find out as you study through the judgments of God in the book of Revelation, you know what interesting thing about Revelation is this. There are no atheists in the book of Revelation. There are none. They all know God exists. Now, they re- many reject Him, and they accept Satan as their God, but they know God exists and they curse his name. There are no atheists. They know the judgments of which some of those are plagues are from God, and the remedy is repentance. In the Old Testament, we find that the people knew this is from God. The remedy is repentance. Where'd this come from? It came from China. Where? We don't even, we know the city. Was it a, 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 uh, uh, in a lab? Was it in an a illegal market? Was it some? We don't know. We don't know where it came from. Why did it come? We don't know. Well, what's the solution? We don't know. Now, there's a lot of things we could take, but there's not anything definitive that we could do that could end it tomorrow. And if it were God, there would be. There would be a solution. Repentance. 
And not to say that repentance is not validated right now, and it doesn't mean that people shouldn't be looking at it because they should be. But what I'm saying is it's not a publicly known thing. But God does in Leviticus tell us the principles of when sickness, when plague happens, here's what you need to do in the normal operation of things. And, you know, it's, what's really interesting is these principles in Leviticus are what entered, what, I'm sorry, what ended the Black Death in uh, uh, Europe that killed millions upon millions of people uh, uh, ranging, there's a wide gamut, they say anywhere from 75 to 225 million people worldwide uh, died from that. It killed anywhere from 30 to 60 percent of the population in Europe. Uh, it, was, it was far worse than what we're dealing with today. And what ended it was quarantining and personal hygiene right out of the Bible. And, you know, now, Will God ever send plague again? Indirectly, yes. All right? There's coming a time. God is not judging the nations today. He's not. That's a time for revelation. People that have their end time theology all messed up are probably losing their minds right now thinking that we're in revelation and we're not. This, that's another topic. All right? But indirectly god will uh, uh he will judge the nations all right in uh, the book of revelation uh, for their wickedness and for the rejection of him and that's recorded there in the book of revelation and that time is not now now how do we know that revelation 6 8 talks about the pale horse that kills one-fourth of the world population later on uh, a few chapters later another a third of the population is killed, so that's half the world population just in two judgments, which means there could be many more. Upwards of three-quarters of the world's population die in a seven-year period. Uh, that's an estimation. We can validate from the Bible half, all right? And uh, that's why it's so important to know the Lord is your Savior, so you're not here for that time because you don't want to be. It's going to be, you think this is bad? This is nothing, absolutely nothing. But the pale horse talks about one-fourth of the world's population dying. Uh, call that uh, two billion people in eight years. We'll be at eight billion. So let's just call it two billion people, one-fourth. And they'll die four different ways. War, famine, death, and, and animals going wild. That means your, your cat's going to attack you in your sleep or something like that. I don't know, but this is what the Bible tells us, that animals are going to go crazy. And, and so if, uh, if we divide that just evenly, that's... That's 500 million people dying from each, you know, uh, war, famine, death, and, and animals. And I'm sure it won't be even numbers like that. But, uh, uh, and let's just say, assume that the death is, is plague and talking about that. Because you have war, the fallout of war is famine and plague easily associated with that. And, and, you know, the world has never seen a time like that. Never seen it. World War II, which is the worst world war that this world has ever known killed three percent of the world's population three percent over a prolonged period of time this in a very short period of time is going to kill 25 percent never seen anything like it and you know God is not judging the nations today. God is not working through the nation of Israel today. God is working through His church to reach the heart of men. I said this is a two-part lesson. Is God, all right, is God, did God cause the coronavirus? The answer is no, all right? Which leads to the follow-up question, which we'll deal with tomorrow, which is this. Well, how could God allow it? If He didn't cause it, and God's all-powerful, that means... He allows it. We'll talk about that uh, uh, later, all right, tomorrow. How could he allow it? That's a fair question, and we'll discuss that. But let's ask these questions. Does sickness happen? Yes. And you know what? It happens upon the saved and the unsaved. Uh, you know, New Testament, we, look, the coronavirus is killing Christians too. Pastors have died. Some pastors almost died. Men that love God. So this is not the judgment of God. When the judgment of God comes, He's not judging His own people. All right? He's judging those that have rejected Him. When Christians are dying, right then and there, you know, 
It's not of God. This is life. We find in the New Testament, plenty of Christians got sick. Some almost died. Some did die. And, and so, uh, this virus is killing Christians along with unbelievers. It's not discriminatory. Thus, it's not of God. It's life. It's what happens. It's happened before. It'll happen again. And this is a, but the byproduct of the natural course of the fallen world. We live in a fallen world. This is not the world that God created. This is the world that man messed up when it rebelled against God. And God said, oh, you don't want me? Fine. Here you go. And this is what you get. And the more you get away from God, the worse it gets. Not that he's doing it. It's the byproduct of him not being involved. And so we got to understand this sickness is not the judgment of God. But God will use it for good. And we'll get into that tomorrow. But let me recap. How do we know that this is not from God? In Scripture, plagues uh, ha have a known cause and cure. A known cause and cure. We have neither. Further, God's people are dying as well. Thus, it's not a judgment on the world from God if God's people are dying. Now, God will use it for His glory to bring the lost to Him. And we live in a world that is a fallen world, and so the byproduct of that is we deal with all sorts of stuff that's not great. Makes me long for a world where we won't have to deal with this, and that's what God does have awaiting all those who put their faith in Him. A new heaven and a new earth where there's no sickness. We don't have to walk around in stupid masks. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Please don't be offended, all right? Uh, but uh, uh, now the mayor of Haverhill said we have to wear Somebody said, are you going to preach You going to preach in a mask? No, I'm not going to preach in a mask. can't preach in a mask, all right? No, that, that, that's, that's absurd. But anyhow, by the way, it, it, it just I used to actually have to wear a respirator for a job that I did before I got in the ministry. And what everybody needs to understand is that unless you have a HEPA filter mask, it doesn't do anything. All right, so your scarf or your little, you know, uh, cloth thing you put over your face does, well, that's not true. It, it gets about 3%, 3% safer, um, unless you have a filter. Surgical mask is about 50%, and the N95 is about 95%, the, the HEPA filter mask, and uh, your cloth mask, it, it makes no difference. That's why I've walked around with nothing on my face because it doesn't matter. And, and, you know, but now you have to. So I'm, I'm getting creative and I'm going to have fun with it uh, till, till it's lifted. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. Did God cause this? No, no, he did not. But he is going to use it for his glory to draw people to him. And I believe he already is. And I believe even some of you that will read, I'm sorry, not read, but watch this uh, devotion. Uh, God's working on your heart. I'm here to help you. If you got questions, hopefully I got answers. And I'd uh, be more than happy to help you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Hope it was a help and encouragement. We'll be back tomorrow to answer the question of, well, why does God allow it? God bless you. Have a great night.